I thought I'd do an additional part on this. I'm just going to cover a, a few more advanced tips. So I'm just on a, just a new startup. Even if you go file, new, general, hey, look, there's file, new, video editing. Does this go straight to it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you're just on the opening one, it's, it's also up here. And you can go to video editing. But, yeah, I didn't know about that file, new, video editing. That's cool. Okay. And you're taken to this screen. You can mouse wheel out on here. One of the first things you want to do is set up your properties and make sure all those look good. Uh, mainly your output going to where you want to go. I like to go to a, I have a folder named rendered where I save everything on a second hard drive that way it doesn't interfere with my OS drive while it's rendering so much and file format FFmpeg video is what I generally use and the encoding um, here on the output generally set the audio to AAC that seems to be very reliable output quality uh, previously I said I always use medium. That's not completely true. I mean if you bump it up the render takes a lot longer but if it's a final render you probably do want to do this at least up to perceptually lossless. That should be enough there. I'll adjust the frames once I'm, I have my video in. The frame rate should come in automatically. Let me grab a small video from somewhere. So bear with me just a moment here. Here's a five, a six kilobyte video. I don't even know what this is. Looks like a, some kind of League of Legends clip. Yeah. All right. So first thing I'm going to do while I'm down here is I'm going to hit page up and then set this endpoint to 771. That way I have the length of the video as the render time. And this little number up here, I think on my last video I was on a beta version, so it appears to have changed since then a little bit. Um, what this is up here, the first number is the seconds and the second number is the frame. So since I'm at 30 frames per second, usually I record at 60, but apparently I did this one at 30. It'll be zero all the way up to the frame 30 and then to one second. One of the big things I wanted to show you is just how to do some work on this, this video. Because sometimes you'll take like, maybe you're bringing in a cell phone video and it's vertical and you don't want it to be. And you can change that by, well, you click on your video. So if you click on it, press shift A, it'll bring up this little menu and you can, you can go to effect strip and then transform and you get a transform. So now you can edit this green transform bar and it is basically a transformation of this video. So if you change the length of this video, the transformation changes along with it. You want to click on this transform and you can you can do things. Now layering effects, like if I do another transform on this transform, things are going to get awkward. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you want to do multiple transforms you probably want to render your first transform and then bring in whatever you just rendered and then do a new new one on top of that because layering transforms in my experience gets a little weird and doesn't always do what you expect so now that I've got this transform clicked I'm going to show you how to just rotate it um, if you look down here in effect strip you'll see position scale and rotation so you can adjust this rotation to just rotate your video like so. So you can do an exact 90 degree rotation, 180 to flip it, etc. And 360 is back to where it was. And scale, if you're doing scale, you can stretch out your video in either way. Let me set this back to one. And position, of course, just changes the position of it. Now another thing that's really cool about these is you can keyframe them in. I'm going to bring over a, this is just part of Blender, bring over a little second thing and change this second little area. I'm going to change this to a dope sheet and that's for keyframes. So now that you know how to flip your video, sometimes, I mean sometimes you just want it to be flipped the entire time, but other times you want it to kind of animate. And you don't, this dope sheet is just a visual representation of what I'm going to show you next here. So say you want it to start out normal and then right about here you want to do something. So what you do is you go over the thing you want to change, like let's say the rotation, 
and you press I and that puts that marks a point on the, the timeline where it stays like that then you go to where you want your change to be finished for what you're doing and perform your change let's say we want to do a just a full rotation it's gonna be a little weird so I'll do 360 or negative 360 and I'll press I again so what's gonna happen in between these two keyframes is it's the video is going to flip, so check that out. And you can do that with anything. You can also do it with the volumes if you want volumes to fade in and out. And so that's that's just something to keep in mind too, where you can do effects and you can do fade ins by adjusting opac opacity. Say you want it to start out at zero, and then about right here you want it to be one so you change it to one there press i now you notice you start at the beginning when you play it it'll look like it's fading in and you can do the same thing with it going out you don't have to do the opacity on a transform you can do that on the true video layer but if you've already got a transform applied you might as well do it on the transform so say for a fade out I'll, uh, I marked it there then I'll go to the end of the video change it to zero, mark it again by pressing I, and there we go, I for insert keyframe. So now I got a fade end, a little weird flip here, and a fade out. So a lot of people like to put their logos up and stuff, and there's, there's kind of multiple ways of doing that. If you just want to do it with an image, you literally just make an image with whatever you want and then you drag it in and let's see I'll just use oh this old thumbnail from one of my old old videos check it out so now I've got this image in here and since it's above the video it will be on top of it like it'll just take up the space the video won't display wherever that is but what you can do is you can move these around you can press B to make a box grab and grab all the stuff you want and press G and then Y to lock to the Y axis and put those way up if you want and you can grab a little dot here on the edge to make that wider and you can do the same with the horizontal one too and that way you can layer as you want so you know put it up here you see it put it down here you don't see it because it's underneath but maybe I don't know maybe I want it here and you can also Let's, let me zoom back in here and you can also adjust the length of your videos however you want you can do the same thing with or of your images what I meant to say you can do the same thing with keyframes on those as far as the opacity and you can mess around with offsets and crops if you want and there's also some additional effects uh, with the color you can saturate multiply yeah so that can be a kind of cool way to get your images in there and get them fading in as you want Okay, well, I think that's going to about do it for this episode. I hope you found this handy. And also, one last thing, if you're bringing stuff and you don't want it, you can just right-click it and go to Delete and remove it or just press the Delete key. As far as cutting, there's one more thing I should probably tell you about cutting. I'm going to go ahead and delete this effect layer, which gets rid of all the keyframes that were on it, too. So, say I want to cut this. If I just hit plain old K, it's a soft cut. And with a soft cut, let me bring these up a little bit, you can drag and restore your video of what you cut. There's also a hard cut, which is if you hold shift and hit K, it does a hard cut. Now a hard cut doesn't allow you to restore video or audio. So those are the differences. I'm, I'm not entirely, I always do soft cuts just because they're easier to work with if you don't get your cut perfect, you can fix it real easy. If you do a hard cut, I think it saves you a bit of memory, but I've never noticed a difference. So that's, uh, that's the final tip I got for you guys there. When you're ready to go, just go up to render, hit render animation, and off it goes. I'm going to stop that. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.